to the whiteboard. Step one, and you'll hear me say this all the time in my videos, you must know your four major numbers before we do any debt elimination strategy, before we do any financial strategy whatsoever. We have to know this. And many of you think you know this, but you really don't. Many of you work with a coach or you watch a couple videos, you think you know your numbers, you may have a, a decent idea of what you make and what you spend, but you are not operating with pinpoint accuracy. And my channel is, is really dedicated to that before I introduce any strategy, any move in our finances. We have got to have pinpoint accuracy on our numbers. I know some people like to estimate and do round numbers, right? And they're like, Denzel, you know, 37 cents doesn't make a difference, you know, or you know, if I make $5,382.91 a month, um, you know, I, I round it to the nearest hundred, you know, so I, you know, either I underestimate or overestimate, whatever it is. I, I don't play with the numbers personally. That's just the way that I operate. If you want to uh, assume and estimate and, get, and you know, have your, your guesstimations, hey, that's totally fine. You, you probably will, but if you're gonna work with me one-to-one, -one, right, I'm letting you know how I operate in advance. That's gonna help you determine whether you even wanna keep watching this channel or work with me one-to-one, -one, is I'm a pinpoint accuracy kind of guy, right? I got to know the numbers internally. In addition to knowing your numbers down to the penny, what I do in actual application is I underestimate your total income, I overestimate your expenses, and I underestimate cash flow, and that creates a buffer. That buffer allows for room for error for those who are brand new. Because if we're going to compare the velocity banking concept to debt snowball or debt avalanche or to the traditional way of getting out of debt, you want to make sure that you're not overestimating or giving yourself an upper hand with velocity and making this look better on paper than debt snowball or debt avalanche, and then this ends up being the better option. We don't want that. We want there to be a nice gap with the results. How long this will take me to get out of debt, velocity banking versus, I personally like to see a healthy gap. What is a healthy gap? When we look at someone's finances, and let's just say you have the whole nine when it comes to debts. You've got the mortgage, you've got student loans, you've got car loans, you've got personal loans, and you've got credit cards. With the velocity banking concept strategy method, ideally, we wanna be able to look at someone's personal finance and see all those different debts that they have and get them debt-free within five to seven years or less. That is a very, very like attractive number. Five to seven years or less, completely debt-free, everything? That is like a, a sales pitch right there, okay? Well, what I do is I look at that snowball, that avalanche of that person's numbers and finances and then say, look, if we were to use the traditional method of getting out of debt, just making extra payments each and every month, we will be debt free in about 9.5 years or 10.5 years or 12 years, 11 years. And then I show Velocity Banking and the potential that it has. I say, look, we can probably get out of debt in about seven years. Seven compared to nine and a half is a nice healthy gap. But if the result is 9.1 years versus 9.5 years, that's too tight for me personally. Now, it's still less than Snowball. Okay, that's fine. But maybe there's some things in the current marketplace today that are messing with those numbers. Or two, you yourself could be doing some other things to improve that 9.1 to about seven and a half or seven years. So there's tweaks that could potentially be made that would fix that strategy. Or, or guess what? Hey, we can just simply say, velocity banking doesn't make sense for your situation. Let's not get sold by Denzel or Christy Van or Mike Adams or Quack Brothers. Let's not get in this illusion of leveraging debt just for the sake of leveraging debt, getting a line of credit just for the sake of getting a line of credit. Uh, there was a lady I was emailing back and forth. This person is debt free and she's been watching my channel for a while and she wants to get a personal line of credit to buy a car. And I said, okay, what banks are you looking at? The two banks that she was looking at, one personal line of credit was at like nine-ish percent 
The other one was 12 and a half percent. You want to get a car around $30,000. Let's say we're able to get approved for a line of credit around $30,000 with either one of those banks. Does that make sense for you personally? Let's run the numbers and compare a personal line of credit at nine and a half percent, $30,000 versus what I could maybe get financing at the dealership or at a local credit union for five, six percent car loan and depending on how much you put down how would that look how much you put down the interest rate say it's five six percent what is your cash flow per month so if your cash flow per month if you're cash flowing like fifteen hundred dollars and you finance a five-year car loan 30 grand but you put three down right you put 10 15 20 percent down Okay, that's going to change the amortization schedule of that five-year loan and what your payment would be, right? Let's come, let's just run the math. All, so often, we're not running the math. We're not comparing the traditional method. And then we're just so ready to jump into this personal line of credit, get the 30 grand, and then go to the dealer. Now you borrow 30 fully and you go and do that method. You go that and you finance the car. 100% through your line of credit rather than, hey, maybe there was a third option. Maybe the third option was Velocity and Debt Snowball put together. Go to the dealer, put money down, Kohar Cash, have a lower interest rate on the full 25, 27,000 that you'd be financing rather than 25, 27 at 9.5 to 12.5%. And maybe in small bite sized chunks, what I call micro chunking, micro chunks out of the line of credit to manipulate that nine and a half down to two to accelerate that five, six percent. And maybe we only do it for like one or two chunks and then snowball the rest of the way there. Because the last thing you want to do, do velocity banking with your line of credit or HELOC, get a head start over debt snowball, all to just fall short. Because if you don't run the numbers, debt snowball has a way of catching up to velocity banking over the long haul. Velocity banking has a way of getting a massive head start. So my whole thing is, well, if you get a massive head start in a race, why would you lower your speed? Why not just maintain speed, right? You, you, you turn the booster on, you got a head start, the booster came off, and now you're just coasting, right? You're coasting. And you constantly stay ahead of that snowball. Meaning the way that would look in practic practically with velocity banking is you make your first two chunks, whatever it is, you got your, your boost, you're ahead of snowball by six to nine months, even a year. You're ahead six to nine months to a year. Cut off velocity banking, that, that line of credit's at nine and a half, 12 and a half interest rate. Your loan's at four, three. You won, like you won. Just snowball the rest of the way the last year and a half of that loan. Just make extra payments the rest of the way. You beat the person that, you know, your version of you that did traditional. Why lose momentum by forcing that nine and a half to keep paying off the three and a half loan? There comes a point in time in that amortization loan where your monthly payment is now over 50, 60% going to principal and there's literally no interest remaining. There's, there's very little interest remaining on that. So by you just making a direct cash payment to the loan is going to increase it faster than you stripping that out of that low rate into your high rate line of credit. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make with velocity banking is you force it all the way through rather than just getting your win. Get your win. You're ahead a year, two years, three years. You're ahead. One. Congratulations. Let's cut it off right? And know when to turn it back on, okay? An example would be, look, 2020, 2021, interest rates plummeted, right? They went so low, very, very low. You could get a HELOC at like 3%. There was HELOCs at like 1.99%. There was HELOCs at two and a half, three and a half, super low. Even personal lines of credits were in the neighborhood of five, six, seven percent Super, super low. If you had loan rates at the time, you could have, boom, turned on velocity banking. And then what happened? 2023, well, I should say 2022 is when it started, right? 22, 23, now 24. Let's say your HELOC jumped from 3% all the way to 9.5%, and, and you have that 2.5% mortgage rate, that 3.5% mortgage rate. Okay, from 2020 all the way to 23, you were doing velocity banking, and then maybe we 
turn it off because the rate on your debt tool is just too high, right? Now we're approaching, now it's mid-2024, interest rates have stayed level so far. The feds have not increased the rate and they haven't decreased it. But what we're seeing, what I'm seeing in the marketplace is HELOCs are coming back with intro rate offers. So if you are sitting on a HELOC at nine and a half, ten and a half percent interest rate, and we could go to a different bank and get an introductory rate of 6%, 4%, okay, that might be a good opportunity to switch banks. You don't have to continue displaying loyalty to a bank that's no longer serving you. You can go to a different bank that's willing to serve you, give you a much lower introductory rate for the next year, and then help turn back on Velocity Banking to accelerate some of those loans that were maybe around six, seven percent, right? Maybe that makes more sense. So let's let's be proactive about that. So that's step one. Gotta know your numbers. What's coming in, what's coming out, total debts, cash flow, everything down to the T as, as much detail as you can get about yourself and how you operate, right? There's some of you that are hourly plus commission. Let's look at what you made last year in commission, divide that number by 12, add it on to your hourly rate. If you're a nurse, you're hour hourly, but you get a bunch of overtime. Let's look at your base income, that's steady. Let's look at what you did last year in 2023 in overtime, divide that number by 12. So we get an average of what we're looking at month to month. If your salary plus bonus, so you have that, let's just go off salary, right? So this is what I like to do is I like to get pinpoint accuracy. First, let's see what you did last year, last 90 days to a year. What did you generate in income net? I'm just going to take that number divided by 12, right? Okay, cool. That's everything. Everything that came in, all your different income sources. Then we break down the income. Okay, so this is salary for two husband, wife, and wife gets bonuses and husband gets overtime. Okay, so that results in an extra $15,000 a year in income. Take that off the table and just look at both of your bases. Now I just underestimated the low balls your income tremendously. Then I look at your expenses. Denzel, we have expenses that we pay on an annual basis. We've got quarterly bills, and we got monthly bills. Okay, we take the quarterly stuff, times it by four, divide by 12. Take the annual stuff, divide by 12. Let's see what that looks like on a monthly basis. So we see in a, in a year total, you spent this in 2023. In a year total, you made this in 2023. And then we look at cash flow. Total number, divide by 12. So now we've underestimated income. I look at expenses. Whatever that number results in, I'll add a little buffer. 100, 200, $300, depends on how much money you make. Then cash flow, I see, okay, we're cash flowing about $1,400.98. Um, cool. So I'm gonna lowball that to 1350 or 1300. Then I'm gonna run Velocity Bank. And then I'm gonna compare Snowball with those numbers. I say, look, this is what we can do. We'll illustrate it. And then chances are you'll beat what I'm what I'm displaying, which is going to make you feel better. And practically speaking, when we involve the human factor into a strategy, there's always human error, right? There's always a, a life that occurs, things that happen, unexpected expenses, emergencies, you name it. When we design our our four major numbers in a way that accounts for life, that accounts for unexpected stuff, velocity banking ends up performing way better for us because of the liquidity factor and how we're using our, our debt tool versus Snowball. When something comes up, you literally have to take that cash flow that month, apply it to whatever it is you needed to take care of, then you have to get back on track. Sometimes there's a delay in that. And a lot of people forget that with when you're just doing debt snowball or debt avalanche, is there can be a, a huge delay when someone has an unexpected event, emergency. Now they have to think on the fly how I'm gonna cover that. They cover it ends up costing them two months worth of cash flow, then by the third month, they're just getting back to cash flow positive or recovering. Then they're like, oh wait, yeah, that's right. I have to go back to paying off this debt. Maybe there's a, a 30 day delay there, a 45 day delay there. We typically will not see that kind of delay with velocity banking because of what we already did from the beginning. When you first start velocity banking, you make your first chunk, you got your win. The win is in the chunk. So out the gate, you're ahead. Doing velocity banking, doing velocity banking. Oh. Emergency comes up, you have liquidity from those past four, five, six months of cash flow is sitting in your line of credit. Boom, take care of the expense, keep it going, right? There's no delay. What's the what's the actual delay? Because there's a delay in both, obviously. The delay is whatever the expense was. So you only dealt with that in Velocity versus Debt Snowball. 
there can sometimes be just a time delay. When do I make this payment again? Or, or I have to evaluate each and every month how much cash flow is left over before I make that payment. That is the human error, human factor there that a lot of people um, forget. Okay, so I know I'm spending a lot of time here, 20 minutes already into the video because this is everything to me. Knowing your numbers, when I'm sitting with a client that knows their numbers through and through, everything else comes so easy, it flows. But a lot of you are trying to get the strategy and get the tool and do the thing and it's like you don't even know what you're bringing in, bringing out. You're all over the place, right? So gotta know this, great, let's say you do. Step two, velocity banking pregame work. I have a playlist on my YouTube channel and I'm gonna take you there real quick and I'm gonna put the link in the chat. This is literally your next step. On my YouTube channel, you go to playlists, you'll find this right here, velocity banking pregame work. There's exactly nine videos, maybe about two hours of content. This is extremely valuable right here. This will save you thousands of dollars because there is so much that we could do before we even start the strategy. There's so much that I can't share in one video. So if you go through this playlist here, I'm going to give you so many tips and tricks and tools before you even start the strategy that would fully optimize the strategy. So if you basically, before you even start your race, you're already right. So it's like, imagine showing up to a, to a race and they put you a hundred yards in front of everyone. Well, it's like, that's an unfair advantage. Well, in your personal finances, we're looking for as much advantages as we can find in the marketplace. So if, if we take that time to find those advantages, to do our homework and due diligence with the right banks in your states, in your areas, to find the lowest interest rate, oftentimes you'll hear a lot of the velocity banking content creator practitioners like myself say that the interest rate on your debt tool is not that important okay i don't necessarily take that stance although i know what pe i know what people are getting at right i know what they're getting at when they say that but that doesn't always translate to the viewer the viewer goes to freaking navy fed and they get a 15.9 percent checking line of credit why didn't you go to pen fed why didn't you go over here why didn't you go over here to this local bank that's giving you an introductory heloc at five percent seven percent and then it only jumps to prime, just prime, not prime plus two or prime plus three, but literally just prime or even prime minus one or prime minus 1.25. Like, wouldn't that be better? Like whoever has a lower rate wins in terms of if we're just comparing two velocity banking strategy, let's say you either could go with this HELOC at 10 and a half percent, or you can go with this HELOC at seven. Um, the only reason why I would not go with the HELOC at seven is if it's truly not a HELOC, it's a home equity loan and the bank tricked you. Right. But if we're got, we're looking at two HELOCs, they operate the same. They don't have any weird requirements or restrictions. Ten and a half versus seven and a half. Simple interest is simple interest. Why would we not go with the seven and a half? We didn't go with the seven and a half because we didn't know it was there. You guys didn't know it didn't it didn't exist. You searched on Google. You saw two banks, not realizing there's thousands of banks in America. And you, if you would have did 20 more minutes of research, I promise you, you would have found a lower rate line of credit to operate with. We want to start the race way ahead of everyone by just knowing that that pregame work. So I'm going to put it up here one more time so that you can see it, right? It's extremely important that you get this. Take the time. Only cost you like, hey, these, these could get knocked out. These videos could get knocked out. Extremely, extremely important, extremely valuable. Save you a ton of money. Really two is mixed with three because in that playlist, you'll see the last video says rules, right? Velocity banking rules. If you don't know the rules of this strategy, there are rules. Uh, I mean, I, I came up with them myself, practice amongst all the practitioners and content creators, and they have their own, they have their own spin to it. So I have rules that I laid out and a lot of them have to do with leverage. So many people talk about leveraging debt to create wealth and create cash flow. Then on the total opposite side, you have a lot of content creators, influencers, and just everyday people that talk about why you should not leverage debt to create wealth. So you'll have those opposing views. You have to get past that. You have to decide which camp you want to uh, sit in, right? Then what almost I don't really hear anyone ever talk about is if I do have a hundred grand of capital debt that I can leverage to either create wealth 
or accelerate debt. How much of that 100,000 should I use? Almost every business credit guru out there I've seen, almost every one of them, almost every personal credit repair YouTube channel I've ever seen, these are channels that deal debt. They dish out debt to their clients and they're proud of it. I got my client $250,000 of debt. I got my client $1 million of debt. I got my client $2.5 million of 0% unsecured debt. They're all proud and I'm like, how much of the 2.5 are they using? How much of the 1.5? How much of the mill? How much of the five? How much of the 250 are they actually using? And chances are they're using 100% mind boggling to me. You're educating your audience and clients to one be to basically be 100% leverage. Does that make any sense? Right? Like let's think about how leverage works, really process how leverage actually works. You have to be able to have some sort of weight on the other side. And as we're, we're comparing to a line of credit, if I have $100,000 in there, the super smart thing to do would be not to borrow 100% of it at any given time. But now we have to come up with a number that makes sense and then correlate it to your what? Four major numbers. So I spent a lot of time talking about the velocity banking rules of leverage. What makes sense according to your personal finances? I give you a template and then you run that template according to your finances. And trust me when I tell you the numbers line up beautifully. Almost every single time they always line up perfectly and it accounts for how, how far we're projecting into the future. Too many of us are leveraging over a year and a half to two plus years worth of future cash flow rather than doing it in chunks, leveraging six to nine upwards of 12 months of future cash flow rather than 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 plus. If you leveraged over two years of your future cash flow production today off your numbers and that thing you did goes wrong now you're in the hole not just two years but it's really more like four because it's debt so you just set yourself back say three four years trying to leverage because you saw the guru do it but you forgot the way the guru makes money is by selling you on the concept rather than them doing it themselves very few actually do it themselves and they have some sort of a business that teaches and takes them through a process. Very, very few. The majority are just pushing their affiliate link. They're getting paid, but you look at their own personal finances, they're not leveraging that kind of money they're selling to their clients. I mean, let's be real. They're really not. So please don't get sold into that. So again, velocity banking rules, extremely important. Let's say, boom, you know your numbers, You've done the pregame work. You feel confident. You've done your tweaks. You're, you're setting yourself up. You know the rules. Now it's like, okay, let's go get our tool. A personal line of credit, a business line of credit, a home equity line of credit in the first position or second position. How do we determine this? This playlist will tell you that, okay? So I have a playlist called All About the Line of Credit. Let me take you there, right? And again, I'll put this in the chat. I'm right over here. now. This playlist is longer, 14 videos. Oh my God, so much work, right? All about the line of credit literally breaks down every question you need to ask, every detail. It lays it out, my friend. It lays it out, everything. So it breaks down that whole idea of where, how, what, who, when, why, every question you need to know, getting the perfect line of credit for your financial situation. You watch that next, pregame work and understanding velocity banking rules. Then once we get our debt tool, we're still not gonna do the strategy yet because prior to we're running numbers off of assumption until we actually get the tool in hand and we know what our rate is, and we know what our credit limit's gonna be, and we have everything lined up, and we have our debts lined up, then the final step is run the numbers and take action. Run the numbers. This could take someone anywhere from six to 12 months. You might be thinking, Denzel, that's, that's too long. Uh, trust me, if we go slow to go fast, you'll end up beating everyone, every strategy, because you took the time to get it right the first time. When I do things in my life, preferably if I'm gonna do anything, I like to do it right. I don't like to do Jimmy Jobs. I don't like to do willy nilly, okay? I don't like to shoot from the hip. I'm not that kind of guy. I like to check the wind, temperature, everything, then fire. Now, 
others. Hey, that's where you have to figure out, oh yeah, no, Denzel's not my kind of guy. I need someone that's a little, a little quicker. I tend to beat a lot when I compare to other people's financial situations. When I'm running numbers with my clients, I'm like, okay, do that. Let's do it. Let's do it your way. Then they call me six months later. Eh, it's not working out. Denzel. Let's, okay, let's, let's change it up. You ready? Cool. No magic. Let's just run the number. Another cool practical thing here for those of you who are brand new to velocity banking to build discipline with this strategy because it will require discipline. We could be doing debt snowball. So while you're learning, you're watching the videos, you could have lined up your debts from smallest to greatest and just started making extra payment or maybe saving it up an emergency fund, right? Or just prepare preparing yourself for leverage. So you, you can still keep getting results in terms of paying off debt. And then by the time we're ready to go, we make the perfect chunk with the perfect tool and it gets us 10 months ahead of the person that started with their 15% line of credit. You're out the gate with a six, seven, and you're going way, way faster. These are the five steps, extremely important. I'm gonna take a minute real quick and I'm gonna put the link velocity banking pregame work throw that up there for you that's the velocity banking pregame work then i'm going to throw the other link and this is the link velocity uh all about the line of credit i'll have those two links will be in the chat i will put it in the comment section i'll try to have cards running the whole nine again you go right to the youtube channel take you to a playlist and it's gonna it's gonna set you up real real nice in addition to those two playlists i'm not someone that's just 100 percent Velocity banking is the end all be all strategy. I don't believe in that either. I think there's a time for it. There's a time to shut it off. There's a time to turn it on. There's a time to shut it off. Let's say you're really enjoying the content and we really vibe, right? I recommend continue going through the playlist because I, br I break it down even more. So I've got a playlist called Frequently Asked Questions About Velocity Banking, 69 videos in there. And the, and the titles are your questions, All right? So you don't have to go in order. You just kind of go directly to your question, right? And that might spark another question. You might find it. Then I got videos on velocity banking using a second lien HELOC, velocity banking using a first lien HELOC, velocity banking using a personal line of credit, velocity banking with a credit card. It's all there. It's an archive of content that you can literally immerse yourself in, to get the best results. And it didn't cost you a dime. That's another thing. Before you jump in hiring someone, and paying a couple grand, and then having to learn it, why not get prepared? Then you get on a call with me. I fully, we're fully able to maximize that, that hour, a couple hours together, and you're off to the races. How I like to work, personally. So please take the time. Just keep stressing on this. It will save you so much money. It's crazy. Because what we're forgetting is the human factor in all of this. Let's think about you for a minute. How long have you been in debt since the moment they started working? They went to school, you went into debt. Started getting a job, you have an apartment, you have to get a car loan, you had to get a personal loan, you open up a credit card, you open up this, before you know it, now you gotta get a house because you get married because you got kids, now you got that debt and the student and the car and it just keeps going and going. So you've been in debt your whole life. Most Americans have been in debt since the moment they started working. Is that not a true statement, right? So really process that from age 22, 18, 25, and now you're 45 and now you're 55 and you come across my content at age 55. I have to break past 25, 20 plus years of you being in debt, 20 plus years of you having bad financial habits. I have to break through that. We have to break through that together. That's the human factor. So now at 45, 55 years old, here's the problem. You think you're running out of time. You think you're old at 55 at 45. You think that the that if I would, you know, if I go a little faster now, if I speed things up, then I can be out of debt sooner. And that could be that's so far from the truth. The truth is, if we actually slow down, evaluate our life, when's the last time you talked to someone about being in debt for the last 20 plus years? Like actually sat down and had a conversation where the other party has no incentive to use that against. When's the last time you actually got counseling, coaching, life coaching on your bad financial habits? Most people never been to a therapist, counselor, coach on their money. They talk about some people talk about their trauma some people go to therapy about other things but not money money doesn't typically come up and even if it does the person listening is not a professional on money so now you're coming across me 
a professional on money with coaching and counseling skills where we can just have a conversation about how you operate, who you are, where do you want to go, who do you want to be. And if we were to t if we take that time to do that in our five steps five step system, I'm telling you the strategy is easy. The light bulb is going to go off faster. There's so many people I've worked with over the over the past few years where it literally took them a year and a half of watching content and six months of coaching for the light bulb to go off versus someone else, the light bulb went off in the fourth video they watched. Well, when I evaluate that person versus the person that took them a year and a half, person that I talked to, let's say it's a mom, 55 years old, year and a half she's been watching my content, then we jump on a call, then she signs up for coaching, but it's only until six months in she tells me, oh, by the way, I had a divorce two years ago. I lost someone in my life. My, my mom and dad were abusive to each other, especially around money. No one really spoke about money. So, so she didn't really open up. Usually the questions I ask tend to be you know, surface level. They don't really go too, too deep, right? I'm not trying to have that client run away from me, right? I need to reel them in and I do it in a, in a, in a slow approach because once they open up, the progress they make is insane, insane. So let's take that example, that mom, when she finally opened up in that six month and then we started going deep into that and then strategically unlocking and breaking through some of those things, all of a sudden she watches the video two weeks later, the light bulb goes off, emails me, Denzel, I think I get it. I think I got it off to the races versus I talk to the person four months in, right? Uh, four videos in, they become a client without even jumping on a call with me. They're like, boom, signing up, let's go type of type of mentality. Then come to find out, oh yeah, then so I've been doing that snowball with Dave Ramsey for the last seven years. And you know, we're a house of faith. Uh, we go to counseling. We go, do we do this? We do that. We have systems. And I'm like, okay, you're bringing me in to just tweak it boom, off to the races. So extremely important, right? Extremely, extremely important. So recap, these are your first five steps. We've got the two links in the chat. I'll have it in the comment section. I'll have it everywhere. Velocity banking pregame work, all about the line of credit. We run the numbers. We then take action. Here's just an idea of what's going on. Velocity banking in 2024, the prime rate right now is 8.5%. So when you're looking for your debt tool, when you're at stage four and stage five, when you're acquiring your line of credit. Ideally, anything below 8.5% is going to be attractive in this marketplace, 2024, May. So if we can find a home equity line of credit under 8.5%, a personal line of credit under or at 8.5%, those are gonna be your best tools in the marketplace. Now, do they get lower than that? But only typically with an intro rate offer for six to 12 months typically, and that's it. That should be a template for you. Look up the prime rate of where we're currently at. We go research banks, and then we look for the banks that are offering below that. And then typically, once the intro rate is expired, it'll say the rate would be prime minus. I like to look for banks that do prime minus or just prime, not prime plus, because then I'm at nine and a half. That's just me. Now, you'll typically see videos where they're like, even a line of credit at 12%, 15% can do damage. Yes, it's true, but it's a half truth, all right? It's not a full truth, it's a half truth, right? I'm simply saying, why not build up our credit score? Why not do the pregame work to get the best line of credit? Why not do that, right? That's just me. So that's like a simple, quick little fact there. Now, we're gonna to transition to the origin of Velocity Banking. Where the heck does this thing come from and why does it have so much conflict? Why is it so unheard of? Why do people call it a scam? Why is why is there so much misrepresentation around this, this concept? Why is it so hard for people to get? Well, let's talk about that. So the origin of this strategy comes from Australia. That's the origin where it started. And I wanna say around the is when this started around the 90s. Now, the founder, who was the person that took the leap of faith and, and paved the way for people like me to now talk about this publicly and, and educate people on a big scale. A guy named Harj Gill. Here's his book. I recommend everyone buy it. It doesn't hurt. The book is called How to Own Your Home Years Sooner and Retire Debt Free by Harj Gill. His website is www.speedequity.com. 
Com. He has a software, a product that he sells to basically help people get out of debt faster. You read his book, you'll understand his positions, you'll understand his philosophy, where, where he comes from. He has a term for the strategy called Mortgage Acceleration System. Speed Equity is his company name. Mortgage Acceleration System is the first name concept idea before it was called velocity banking. So then years later, when he brought this to the U S another guy came on the scene and called it velocity banking. From there, it got renamed to something called accelerated banking system, AKA the Quack brothers, the Quack brothers named it pretty much after velocity banking. So when they first discovered it, it was, Velocity Banking, and then they branched off, did their own thing, and built a wonderful organization that I'm in partnership with today. And I learned from them. They call it Accelerated Banking System. And then um, I have also heard the term Paycheck Parking. Now, Paycheck Parking might have been used somewhere in between this, but these are the four names that you'll typically hear when referring to Velocity Banking, which is the idea of using, leveraging debt in the form of a line of credit to accelerate debt or create cash flow and wealth using banking products to your advantage rather than the bank using their products against you. This is the main guy, right? And I want to read something that I thought was pretty interesting because this gentleman went through a lot of hell to uh, really bring this strategy. And what's super, you know, just interesting is just the, the history behind where where he started and how much how much money the other side has to prevent this strategy from going so let me see if i can find it for you real quick he talks about this scenario of him like being all excited um he was he was invited to california where these um, mortgage bankers, these different bank CEOs wanted to invite him to hear what he had to say about his system. And he basically got turned down because the issue was the objection. Okay, this is great, Harj, but um, what do I tell my investors, right? What do I tell my shareholders that they're going to lose billions of dollars in interest savings because these people, Americans, are paying their homes off within five to seven years or less instead of 30 years, 20 years. That's, that's so let me see. Yeah. So there's a part that just says why lenders don't want you to know about this, this system. And the objection is if your system is so good, then why hasn't my bank told me about it? Right. He says the short and simple answer to that question is because they stand to lose billions of dollars in interest if they were to do so. In fact, this is such a threatening concept to their bottom line that staff at some of the biggest banks in Australia actively tried to discredit and his system when my original book was launched in 1997. It says, you see, the job of every banker is to maximize profits for their shareholder. And the way they do that is to sell you a 30-year mortgage so they can keep you charging interest for all those years. If all of a sudden they started teaching you how to pay off your mortgage in a third or even half the time, just imagine what it would do to their bottom line, right? For example, based on the latest data I gather from home loan borrowers that are using this system, the average amount of time and interest they are saving on a 30 year mortgage is as follows, $109,000 interest saved 16 years. Now this is back in the nineties, right? So just keep that in mind. Multiply these savings by 100,000 homeowners and you have nearly $11 billion in saved loss interest depending on whether you are borrower or lender. Even if the average interest savings was only $10,000 per homeowner, that still equates to over a billion dollars lost in interest on the bank side. So the banks are set up in such a way where of course they're not going to teach this. A, it's not profitable. B, can you imagine having to train staff employees by the hour to educate you on how to do this strategy? Do you know how stressful that is? They have to teach, they have to teach their staff how to be a coach, how to be a counselor, because there's a human factor in the strategy. It's not just strategy. There's also the human factor in all of it. So I'm just going to, you know, fast forward a little bit here. And there's a part where he basically talks about getting invited. Uh, in the summer of uh, 2004 at the annual Mortgage Brokers Association convention in San Diego, right? They invite him. He makes his presentation a few months in. He's like, the bank CEO is like, uh, I, I guess that's why he was a CEO. He says, I get it. You know, CEO says, I get it. This is a brilliant concept, but how do you expect me to explain this to my stockholders that they're going to lose tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions 
in profits in the next quarter if we start telling our customers about it. Mr. Harge says, I completely understand your concerns and it's not the first time I've been met with that objection from someone in your position. You see what I'm advocating here is a long-term strategy that will not only increase your profits, but will set you apart from every other mortgage lender in the country. By showing your clients how to own their own home years sooner with this system, you will not only have them paying back their mortgages in record time, which means lower default rates, but they will most likely move up into a bigger home or be in a position to purchase a second home much sooner than they had anticipated. Before he had a chance to interrupt, the guys continued. He says, furthermore, if you do the right thing by your customers by giving them the right loan products to implement this system, you will not only have a client for an entire lifetime, but they will most likely recommend you to everyone they know because of what you did for them. This is true. Yes, there is potential for reduction in short-term profits. However, you will more than make up for it by capturing a large market share, reduced delinquencies, lower acquisition costs due to repeat and referral business, as well as generating immeasurable goodwill by sending a message to every homeowner in this country that you are on their side, right? So the CEO of that time was like, yeah, I see your point and all that, but we're not gonna move forward with you. Because he exposed this to the banks, that got around and the banks ended up a, you know, putting a marketing campaign out there to basically discredit this guy in Australia, right? Calling it a scheme, scam, you name it. And so this, this dude had to go through a lot. So I, I, it's a good read. I suggest you read it, check it out. That's the origin. So it's like, okay, this started this strategy started in Australia. Then it came to the United States. There's banking products that exist that the banks don't even want you to know about. You go to the bank's website, it's not on their front page. It's not on their second page. It's like on the back page. And even when they do display it, they don't give you all the details. It's vague. And then they trick you. The banks have taught Americans how to use their home equity line of credit the way they want you to. Every single bank will, will share on their site, get a home equity line of credit for large, purchases, home renovation, emergency fund. Think about the marketing behind that, not get a home equity line of credit to accelerate your amortized mortgage loan in about five to seven years. There are only three institutions that I know today that are actually educating their client on how to accelerate their home. And I think these three banks stand the test of time. They're not going to fail when many other banks will because they're attracting the right kind of customer, the perfect borrower, and they understand the long-term view on this. And they still sell regular mortgages, but they also have a whole department dedicated to educating their clients on how to accelerate mortgage, their primary mortgages and mortgages, right? So that's University Bank, First Savings Bank, All-in-One Loan, CMG Financial. These are the three institutions. Two of them are banks. The other one is just like a, like an organization and they, and they work with other banks, right? That actually issue the product being a, a home equity line of credit in the first position. Only three banks. Now that you see like, okay, the vast majority of banks don't want you to know this. They will lose money. They'll lose billions of dollars if Americans start getting out of debt sooner. And there's only three banks and a couple of content creators that have very little credibility. I mean, look at me, 28 years old, talking about a random strategy called Velocity Bank. Like how credible is this kid? Where does he come from? Does he have a banking background? Does he have a degree? No, 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 and no. Over 240 something thousand subscribers, the most relevant and active content creator I, I would I would argue for the velocity banking method. Has she ever worked in a bank? So we're talking low credibility for the for the people that are advocating for the strategy. People like me, people like Christy Van. Then you have um Connor J. Wallace. I don't know what his background is either. But again, like to you being new to say YouTube or this particular space, we're random people on the internet talking about a foreign strategy. That already sounds like Ugh, too good to be true, right? I agree with you. Uh, like I totally agree with you. So you've got Connor J, Christy Van, myself, I, I would argue are the three most active people talking about velocity banking the most on their YouTube channel. Then you have the Quack Brothers. Then you have uh, Matthew Pillmore, VIP Financial Education. And then there's maybe a couple other channels, but they're so much smaller not as active and some that um, are big are no longer active. So we're talking a handful of people that are actually educating and coaching and teaching about this. A handful, a handful, not a whole lot of credibility, right? 
And then we're only talking three banks that are teaching and actually supporting the content creators, me and other guys. But me, I think long-term, 40 years from now, we'll see how that looks. 30 years, 20 years from now, we'll see if the messaging switches. That's all it takes is the person with the bigger pocket to dump a ton of money in the marketing and to convince a nation of people why you shouldn't get a 30 year mortgage. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Like, think about that. Like there will be a time where getting a first lien HELOC is more advantageous than a 30 year mortgage. And the banks teach you how you can get this first lien HELOC, pay off your primary, and then leverage the equity in your primary to go acquire another property, do velocity banking on that, pay that off, then get another property and basically spend the next 30, 40 years doing that strategy. And then you create your own pension plan through passive income in real estate. Like, can you imagine that? The marketing behind that's insane. It's just not gonna happen, right? Not anytime soon, but maybe in the future. That's my hope. So Origin, Harge Gill, put this in your notes, get this book, it's a good read. How to own your home years sooner and retire debt free. This is the guy, this is the OG of the concept. And then you've got people like me that are now explaining it, sharing it today. And then you've got the different names, mortgage acceleration system, velocity banking, accelerated banking, paycheck parking. Now you're left with, how can I have someone help me do this, right? What are my options to start doing this? So you've got the DIY option, do it yourself, YouTube university. You watch me, you watch Christy, you watch others, you subscribe, you watch our content. We post actively and that helps you craft your strategy together. I just gave you a five-step formula that's free and will teach you the concept and you will do it, right? Like I'm that confident in my content that you can do this on your own and never actually have to pay me a dollar. I truly believe that because I'm someone that doesn't leave the details out. I give every detail, which is why my videos are so long, right? So if you're willing to sit and wait and watch those videos, I can assure you, you can do the strategy. I'll make the same argument that having a coach, having an accountability partner will help you do the strategy better, and faster, and more efficiently. That's the only argument that I'll make for myself, right? So you've got the DIY option, totally free. Then you've got one-to-one -one coaching and courses, which can vary, you know, in the, let's say 500 to 5K plus range is what I've seen in the marketplace, right? That's hiring a person one-to-one, -one, and then maybe it comes to courses, community, et cetera, et cetera, 500 to about 5K. Then you've got high ticket softwares. There are softwares now on the marketplace that have been here longer than me, longer than any content creator for that matter, starting with Harj Gill called Speed Equity. I don't know what his prices are, but I can assure you it's probably multiple thousands, maybe between three and 5K. Um, it probably wasn't that much 20 years ago, but you know, with inflation and stuff, it costs more now. So then you have Money Max account, which I am an owner of. I have the Money Max account. It cost me like 1,500. This was a couple years back. I think for the average person with a mortgage, because I bought the Money Max account without a mortgage. So with a mortgage, I want to say it could be as maybe as low as 3k and maybe in the range of like 6,000 bucks, right? And then there's the pill method, which is probably more than 6,000. So these are the three most common high ticket softwares where you're basically paying for a software with maybe a little bit of one-to-one -one human interaction with a coach. But the, for the most part, it's plug and play. Put your numbers into the software, pinpoint accuracy, then it will tell you how to do the strategy and then you just follow it. One-to-one -one is coaching, counseling, mindset, trauma, what happened to you when you were six, what's your view of debt, what's your uh, view of success, right? How do you see your life, accountability partner, strategy, doing exactly what the software shows, but writing it out, handwritten whiteboard style, or Zoom meetings, one-to-one um, -one calls, recorded calls, and, and that's it. 